Good morning, preppers. I hope your prepping's going well because time is short. We do have some time still, but time is short. You got to make sure you get your preps done. And I'm hoping out of anything, this uh, video we're putting out today and the articles, articles I'm going to show you will motivate you more to be ready. Because, of course, nobody knows exactly what's coming. All we can do is look at history and see how things are progressing to try to understand uh, where we might be very soon. All right, I'm going to start off with a very quick little story, but it's relevant, so stick with me. Um, my second daughter, um, Hannah, which you see her during the live streams often, is an artist. And she, I mean, I thought I was an artist. I've always loved to draw and paint and stuff, but she, her abilities have far surpassed me. Um, a few years ago when she was in high school, and we homeschool, by the way, all eight of our kids. Um, she wanted to be able to step up her art game. And she was already doing, the, the stuff she was doing was incredible. And I said, all right, well, Hannah, maybe it's to the point where instead of learning from me or learning from YouTube videos, maybe you should see about enrolling in high school, just the classes that is for art to see if you can glean something from the art teacher there. And that's exactly what we did. So we went down to the high school, local high school, and uh, talked to the guidance counselor. And of course, she's like, oh, why don't you enroll in all your classes here? And we're like, no, we're fine with homeschooling. And our kids are coming out top grade because of this. Just let us, we just want to do art. All right, so she goes in the art class. And, and throughout the semester, um, by the way, and this is not knocking this school or the public school system, but they showed her nothing. It was like a waste of time. And, uh, but anyways, that's not the point of the, this video. The point is this. One day I go to pick her up from school. And as I pull in the parking lot, there's police cars there and such. And they said, oh, you can't come in. The school's in lockdown. And I'm like, lockdown? Wow, must be something pretty serious to be in lockdown to lock down the school. They're like, you're going to have to wait for her outside. An hour and a half waiting for her outside. And to the point where I was like, listen, I want my daughter. You know, if anybody else in the world, if my daughter's in Ace Hardware and they decide, hey, we're going to lock the doors and keep her in here, I'm going to file federal kidnapping charges on you. You understand? You, that's my daughter. She's a minor. You have no right to hold my daughter. And they're like, sir, sir, it's just, it's all procedure. We're locking down, whatever. All right. An hour and a half later, she comes out. I'm livid. And she wasn't livid herself, but she was like, dad, listen to what happened inside the classroom. And by the way, I'll tell you, actually, hold on. I'll wait for, I'll tell you why they were in lockdown in a second. She goes, it was really bizarre, dad, because, you know, I teach my kids understanding what's really happening in the world instead of sugarcoating it. And, and I try to show them, you know, you have to watch for these things and watch the people around you. And she's even found it when she sits in that classroom that she's the only one really looking around and surveying the situation for situational awareness while all the other kids are just kind of like staring at the desk, you know, can't even have your phone out. They're just like in la la land. And she said that it was most bizarre. The most bizarre thing wasn't for the fact that they were in lockdown, or it wasn't for the fact that she's literally locked in this classroom for, for an hour and a half. She said the weirdest thing was, is all the other kids, this was like completely normal for them. This was status quo. It's like, oh, hey, go, let's go to school. My first class is history. My second class is math. Then we have lunch and then we have lockdown. And that's it, the way it seemed to her. The fact that all these kids are like, well, what's wrong with you, Hannah? D don't you know we're always in lockdown? And by the way, so here's, here's why they're in lockdown, by the way, in this, in this whole bizarre situation. They suspected a kid had drugs in his locker. The kid wasn't even there at the locker. And they opened the locker up and searched the locker, didn't find any drugs. But from a suspected drugs in the locker, they locked down the whole school. We're not talking about anything threatening to the students whatsoever. It was because of suspected drugs. Now, I'm not going to get into the legalities state by state as far as the Fourth Amendment, illegal search and seizure. Can they search lockers? Can they, they can't. That's totally irrelevant at this point. What is relevant is for the fact that for whatever bizarre, willy-nilly reason, they decide to go ahead and actually kidnap my child and keep him in that classroom. That's how I see it. And so she came out and I was like, Hannah, are you learning anything in this class? She goes, no, dad, no. The teacher realizes that I'm well beyond what they're teaching in there. I was like, you're out of there. We're not going to put you back anymore. And it wasn't just me dictating. I was like, are you okay with that? She goes, yeah, I definitely don't want to go back there again. So we took her out and haven't regretted a single bit. All right. So my thoughts are this, that this whole thing about conditioning students for lockdown, why is that? And it's very interesting because it was just a matter of time after, then suddenly our country was in lockdown. So let's jump into our first article. And you'll see right here 
that it says, look at this, another lockdown. A frustrated student prompts a lockdown at a Douglas County High School in Georgia. And this is, look at this, this is September 30th. This is like very, very recently. We can go through the whole thing. There's almost no reason to. Right here it says, um, this high school is safe after a potential threat by a disgruntled student prompted administrators to lock down the campus. They captured and removed the threat from the neighborhood. And I was like, neighborhood, wait, this wasn't even at the school? Nope. Officials said the incident began with a virtual meeting between the school staff and a student and a guardian. And the student showed, ready, uh, extreme frustration because of his school status. And I mean, I read through the whole thing. Maybe he, maybe he was uh, kicked out of school or there was some kind of disciplinary action. It's really hard to say. And some told, someone told administrators that, oh, he could physically threaten himself and the campus. Okay. Then somebody saw them walking near Interstate 20 toward the school and they put the school into lockdown. Okay. So I don't know if you know it, but when it comes to uh, investigations, this is hearsay. Hearsay does not enact any type of laws whatsoever. The kid was frustrated. And this is one of the things that really chaffs my hide too, is for the fact that it seems to be that in our modern culture, you're not allowed to even have emotions anymore. Anger, how dare you? How dare you have anger? Frustration, how dare you have frustration? You will sit there, you'll be complacent, and you will pretend that everything's just hunky-dory. Or if not, suddenly you're walking down Interstate 20 toward a school and you get arrested. Isn't that crazy? And this is, look, I just simply was like, hey, hey no, let's talk about your lockdowns. And it prompted me to do this video. And here I came across this article. Just bizarre. Okay, so where's this leading to? Well, it's leading to this. I'm not even going to say some names on here because you already know it. The, atro the atrocious ethics of dun, dun, dun. Okay, and it's really interesting. They actually go through and talk about in Vietnam that they actually had a term. It became necessary to destroy the town to save it. And they literally destroyed an entire town trying to save the town. And they destroyed a whole village. And it became an absurd military strategy in a failed war. Absolutely true. Horrible. Okay. So they go through and talk about his reasoning. And he said, and here's his quote. You ready? You have to do something that's rather draconian. And sometimes when you do draconian things, it has a collateral negative consequences. So I don't know if you really know draconian. It's something that definitely popped up quite a bit during that time. But draconian is not measured as something that's, that's just like harsh per se or extreme per se, but it's literally listed as harsh or extreme beyond what you normally should be doing. And it's very interesting that he even said, sometimes you have to be draconian. In other words, he's saying sometimes you have to go much more extreme than you normally have to. He's almost like calling himself guilty on this. It's very interesting. And we're seeing lots of hindsight. And that's all we can do with hindsight. Because I don't know if you know it, but the, the Spanish flu, 1910s, 20s, I think it was, um, they actually had gauze over their faces and they deemed that it did nothing. It's interesting. We see the same thing. But with this, they're finding that a lot of the draconian stuff, he was like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm being draconian. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm being a dictator. I know it. I'm sure Hitler knew he was a dictator. I'm sure he knew he was. Of course he did. But he didn't care. So where is it leading to in the United States? Because in this situation, we have kids being conditioned into lockdowns. Then furthermore, we're seeing this, China's lockdown nightmare is far from over. And this just came out yesterday. But in this case... Um, we're looking at China completely in this situation. They're making it so the police are hitting people. Um, they're, they're well beyond simply just trying to defeat, you know what I'm talking about. So this article is very interesting, and you're welcome to go ahead and just uh, read through it on your own time. But it's going to go through the whole thing and talk about how there's actually people trying to protest because it's insanity what they're doing there as far as the lockdown goes. And what we're finding is, and basically here is like the moral of the story through this whole thing, we're finding in the United States, we're heading in that direction. This was the land of the free and the home of the brave. And now it's the land of complacency. And where are we heading? So when we actually see things like this in China, we are like, holy cow, is this coming here? Let me put it this way. You should be asking, is this coming here? And if you're not asking yourself that question, then you're one of those students in the classroom who's completely complacent and thinks everything's just fine. Because things are certainly not fine. And when we actually see how all this played out 
as far as, uh, I, I, there are certain words I have to even be careful with this because of our draconian YouTube friends. I say the friends very loosely, obviously. It, because when we saw the whole thing play out in 2020, it was blown way out of proportion. And even as a physician at the very beginning, I was like, oh, this is bad, this is bad. And once it started hitting and I looked at it, actually started reading this data, I was like, it's not that bad. It's not. It's, they're making way too much out of this. And of course, the F guy, that's a good word for him, isn't it? He's the F guy it, who's one of the ones that actually made this way too much. So what's, where's it going to end? We look at this last article, at least five Tibetans end their lives amid harsh COVID lockdown because of China. And now we're getting into the real thing where this basically um, the lockdown order came with enough time, without enough time to prepare, leaving people in case of shortages of food, et cetera, et cetera. And that's what we're getting at with this video because we don't know what's coming. Nobody knows what's coming. All we can do is look at historically speaking, how even in the past few years, things went from, hmm, I can be complacent because nothing bad's happening. You want to smack on the face? No, you can't. Stuff's coming. And now here we are. What's next? What's next for us? And this is the whole purpose right here in a nutshell for Goshen Prepping, because not only do we know it, we do not know what's next, but we suspect something bad. You should be preparing, preparing any way you can. And that's why I put these videos out, you know, because I could show you the different ways to store rutabaga, which I try to. I've never had rutabaga. Okay. But instead, stock up in canned food, Maybe you're a rice and beans person, whatever the case may be. Find a way to preserve. Pr try to be more self-sufficient, self-sustainability to have an orchard and have a garden and learn to hunt and fish and all those things that now even modern culture kind of even frowns on. You know, you want to even say to somebody, hey, like I'm a hunter, you kind of wonder if there's going to be any discourse where they're kind of going after you for simply saying something that's been done for thousands of years. So we're heading in a direction that's not good. And poor Hannah and her class really smacked us in the face and showed us that we're finding that the majority of the people in the United States and around the world are not only okay with this, but will go off on you for going against the green. And that's the crap of the story right there.